Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this morning. We have a special guest here. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning up in Southport. Drew Pollard and her working crew, they'll go all over the area. So don't worry about uh, them getting there. They're dependable. And you just count on them. It's good folks there. Now, our weather, high today, 76, low 60. Water temperature in the pier, like yesterday, 73 degrees. Take a look at our river readings. They're still going up. They're high. That price goal of Blunstown now, today, is a 13.5. Went up two feet last night. It shocked the hatch at Caraville. It went up two feet. Those rivers, the last two days, have paralleled each other, which is very odd for that to happen at the same time. It's very rare for it, for it to happen. But the last two days, both of them, uh, uh, 10 one yesterday, and then this morning at 13.5. That's, that's interesting. Okay, and Gail said, don't second guess her, because a lot of times I say, what about that? But she, she was right, they, they are. Tide chart brought to us by Kenton Forest Lawn. Good, strong tides today. Looking at low tide at 416 this morning, and a high tide all the way this afternoon to 503. And the wind come, calm down a little bit, coming out of the east, southeast, at about eight to nine. Okay, and like I said, the. Uh, it's going to be pretty good today. There might be some rain coming in late for the weekend, so if you get a chance to get out today, go ahead and do it. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with our guest. Okay, welcome back, and look who drove down this morning. Cousin Billy. <laughs> Glad to have you, buddy. And listen, I said yesterday on the show now, you know, Billy's outdoors. He fishes and hunts all over Jackson County, all over Panhandle, his son, Matthew, they... Outdoor family, okay, but come to find out, he's been going off on some cruises uh, out of the country. <laughs> uh, I've been giving him a hard time about it. Listen, glad to have you down, and tell us about what all you've been up to. Well, uh, as the hunting season went out, I've done some scouting uh, uh, for hunting season next year. Remember I've talked about that some? Mm -hmm. Scout now. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, looking for sheds, I'll show you a picture of a shed I found to uh, about a month or so ago, but yeah, I got out of town. Happy wife, so happy uh, life, and uh, well, he he texted me from down there, and I, I said, uh, "Are you catching any fish?" I mean, uh, he, he was just lounging around, and he, oh man, I wish I could have went fishing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, wish I could. So but we, I, I'm gonna show you some pictures, um, a little bit. Oh, uh, let's see, is that one right there showing? Okay, Jim? here we go. Oh, uh, big boat there, buddy. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the Carnival Magic, and uh, it, um, that's me on the beach. Look at there. There at Grand Turk, so. Whoa, that's pretty. That's that walking, pretty. Yeah, me walking around, a little exercise, and no skinny dipping for me, no, uh -huh. I better not. Uh, that's a view from the boat as we leave. Oh, man. One of the islands, uh, beautiful water, beautiful, beautiful. And Whoa. Zip lining. What is this? Zip lining. That's you? Yeah. That was an, uh, an adventure, about 60, 70 feet up in the air, and then you come off of it. I had just come off from being out across the uh, uh, little old cut right there, a little uh, water, come across the water about two, two and a half, about 250 yards across there. Whoa, oh, man, come to, I got the other side. And you weren't scared? I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a view from there in uh, uh, Dominican Republic. As we rode back uh, across to, to the boat from the area. These are very professional. I was a little bit impressed, and I had been skeptical early on. These are guys help you set up for the zip line. Oh, but cool. they done a fantastic job, looked after your safety. Made sure you had a good time. That makes sure you have plenty of rope, don't they? All the safety <laughs> Yeah. And there's another view of that zip line tower, one of them, okay. right there. But you see that hill in the background? I zip line from the top of that to that tower right there. No way. Come across that thing right there. Fun, fun, fun. Take your teens and they have a great did, time. Did they give you a parachute in case you fail? <laughs> <laughs> no, no parachute, oh. but they'll catch you. But that's the view as we're leaving on the boat. Uh, 
there in Grand Caymans. All right. All right. Have a lot of fun. We'll come, let's so, see, well, we can do that So one. when you're zip lining, you, you don't have any brakes, do you? Or? They, they'll break you. They, oh. Yeah, they've got some brakes they put on to stop it, but uh, the heavier you are, the faster you're going. <laughs> And that was frightening for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's about five, six day cruise, and yeah, about six days, lots of groceries and food to eat. Um, um, I, I, we were talking about it, and I, uh, Gail and I have been on one cruise a long time ago with another another couple, another good friends of ours, and uh, really enjoyed it. Gail gets seasick real easy. I was telling Billy, she gets seasick washing the dishes sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been around anymore, but I enjoyed listening to these and seeing the pictures of these. That's cool. Well, I, you know, I went to New York back in uh, the end of December, and the year before last, I went to Wyoming, and this time I've gone down there, so Good I'm deal. trying to get out. Hey, uh, April 15th in Grand Ridge at the gymnasium, they're going to have the country music singer Shane Owens there with special guest J.D. Taylor. Now, the J.D. Taylor name don't ring a bell to me, but that Shane Owens is a very good artist. I listened to some of his music. He's going to be the, the doors are open at five, concert begins at six. That gymnasium will be packed full of people, I guarantee yeah. you. I got sent that by the, uh, Jared Tice, and Jared out there always wrangling with horses. He's a well, horse trainer breaker. You know that, and that's, I'm sure, a fundraiser for the Grand Ridge FFA. Uh, yeah. And what good things they do. And it's so great to see FFA and all these schools here in the Panhandle. That's right, they, active they, up they've there. They've been active. very active for years. That's right. So, that's right. Uh, get a chance if you're in the neck of the woods to hear some good, good music. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'll guarantee you that. Those folks will enjoy themselves. Um, Jim Peacock, the county commissioner I talked to the other day, they're still in the working to, to raise some money from the feds to spray Lake Seminole. Okay. Of course, y'all know how that same thing work, that uh, federal thing works. It, uh, May just happen overnight, and, it don't, and, and the next thing you know, it'll drag out. But they're trying to spray Seminole and get some of that grass yeah. knocked back, particularly around the edges, because they don't allow it to do its natural drawdown the way the old master yeah. planned it. You know, the yeah. dry yeah. season, the the water's low because they're quarreling over who got how much water. You know. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Because the cycle of nature would have drought years, and then it would, yeah. like I say, get down, and then a hard freeze come, boom, take care That's of it. That's right. That's so right. Now we put these dams up, and we put the dams up for power for the people. So, yeah. and so anyway, that's that's what's happened on that. But uh, wow, what a unique place that Lake Seminole. Whole, yeah. All that whole area is cool. It uh, is. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with Billy Grantham. Welcome back. So there was a bit of Grantham this morning. He's glad to have him back safely from the cruise and all that zip lining and, and all that good food. But now we'll mm. ask him to bring some pictures. He'll recap the last couple months or two what's going, been going on up in the, in the Jackson County area and, and surrounding areas. So what we got here? Well, while I was on the cruise, I met all kind of people from all over the country on the cruise. And I met some young men and got to talking to them because you want to talk about hunting and fishing with somebody every now and then when you out there. So I found these young men from Hampton, Arkansas. And we got to talking around there and I said, y'all hunt and fish at all? They was like, do we? Boy, they <laughs> went to telling me all about their hunting and fishing stuff. Uh -huh. And I met their mom and dad and grandpa. And I said, if y'all send me some pictures, I'll put you on the TV show because uh, they might be doing some good hunting and fishing out in Arkansas. Here is Caden Clayton with his deer right there he got uh, in southern Arkansas. How about that? Yes, sir. All he right. sent that picture to me. And I then, oh, 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 let me get back up. That's Emory Godwin. I'm sorry. I There's Emory Godwin, my brother-in-law. Uh, he's, boy, he can catch him big ones. Oh, uh, yes, sir. This young man here was um, Gavin Maylar Whoa. from Fordyce, Arkansas with he said i'll send you some pictures of some ducks wow I said, you can't shoot a duck you ain't good boy he said i'll show you some pictures <laughs> so he sent me the pictures of the ducks right there yeah, and true. then and then right there is krypton maylar his brother with them sisters along with a bunch of ducks there 
Ain't that something? They, that? Need, they need a virus to come out and go duck on <laughs> them. I'm telling you, we'll come do we'll a show. We'll bring them back and let them do some fishing and we'll go back yeah, we'll and swap duck hunt. We'll swap a trip with <laughs> you. you. I love you. You got that right. <laughs> and they was just lots of fun and made some great friends out of them. And, uh, Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, they well, was on the cruise. They we were, were glad to get back home. You know, we were talking, and you were telling about it before the show, and I was talking about how, how the outdoors is like a common denominator. When you, yeah. like, No matter where you are, it could be a ball game or, or in the grocery store or whatever, you, you start talking about something outdoors, and boom, all of a sudden, you seem like you have a bond with them. And, and they're from Arkansas, which is an outdoor state, yeah. and here they are. Yeah, you always got something in common. Uh, uh, and fishing's easy to lie about anyhow. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that fishing and hunting except, is easy. Except now with these pictures, we have to take it this order. Yeah. A whole little closer. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All right, so what has you got? Now, this right here is Mike Miles. That's my first cousin. Look at that thing right there. Ooh, I'm wow. not, I believe that was Chipotle River, but I'm not certain of that. Uh, Mike, and then here's his first cousin and my first cousin, Bruce Miles, with a bass. Uh, that Bruce knows how to do it. Him and Mike both. Both of their fathers were fishermen. They stayed on the water all the time, they did, and taught these young older men nowadays yeah. uh, how to fish. Cool Ray Weeks, old sergeant from the prison I worked with for many years, worships at the same church I worship at. Look at that lunker he got right there. Oh, that's pretty. Lake Seminole. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> you know, he won't get mad at me. In the management area, I love to walk this time of year through there and walk around and look and see mm -hmm. and try to pick up something. And look at there. Oh, cool. Of course, that's, I took that picture in the yard, throwed it down on the ground so I can get some idea how big it was with my tennis shoes there. But that's a good shed. Winston, that thing had a five-inch diameter base. Whoa. Which would imply to me that buck was on the decline. Uh -huh. uh, because in the area that I had found him, he was on the decline, I believe, going That's down. Smart. There's Bruce Miles again. Look at that chain pickerel. He's got it on that right-hand side. Or, yeah. Or his right-hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Done some Good fine mess fish. of fish right there. Yes, sir. Fantastic. In, there's Drillbit Baxley, Alex. <laughs> He's been on before. He is on. That's right. He has been. <laughs> and Speckle Perch uh, right there on Lake Seminole. He's got it worked out to a science on how to find them things in there. Uh huh. And of course, he took along his daughter, Hazley uh, Baxley. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, she uh, can catch him things because it's just uh, easy as eating lettuce, she says. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she does a great job and just sweet thing. Yeah. Uh, Winston, ain't nothing like catching and harvesting your own groceries. That right there, they would trap them things uh, out of a big field uh, to get them harvested out. Yeah. And then when you get it smoked down right there, Winston. Oh, man. Yes, sir, that's him and smoked down and pulled pork. Right there, the real You're deal. Right. That is something special right there. I fed the whole family. I would show you the whole buffet, but I ain't going to do it. We ain't got enough time. <laughs> that shows enough right there. Yeah. Well, overall, we're talking about just the, the uh, year you've had up there. and There's been a good harvest up, up there. And you had a had a, uh, some of the farmers over there. You talking to them about that, the field. That well, they, that, that's where the old pig come from. I had been doing some mowing for two or three people, making a little bit of money and people needing the fields mowed down. And they'd had a problem with the hogs. And the farmer saw me out there mowing and mentioned he was fixing to, <clears throat> excuse me, plant his corn. And the hog problem there, he wanted to get rid of them and eradicate them. And I said, well, I'm gonna sit out there and see if I can't plunk off from them. Now y'all know, Hog hunting is year round, even at night time, you can harvest hogs. 24 seven. <laughs> he hired a company to come in there and trap them. And they called me and I come got me one of those pigs that they trapped in there. And of course I butchered him yeah. and smoked him and we eat him and enjoyed him. Oh, uh, yeah. But that's living off the land right there. That's right too. There's something special about that. And, and, and if you don't, they become a problem real quick. Yeah, they're a big problem in, in right that particular area because it's a bunch of landowners. There's a huge swamp and bay down in there and a lot of property butts up against it and they live in there mm -hmm. and they're a problem for everybody, but nobody was willing to let them put 
hog dogs in there and trap them out or yeah. trap them. But this guy finally got him a hired him a trapper to go in there and put a um, machine in there where he could trap a bunch of them. And, and there's a lot, some a lot much bigger ones yeah. in there. Uh, that would be a challenge to. It'd be to interesting. Get out. It'd be interesting now to see it on the follow up next year or two if some of them start coming back and all because. They multiply so so fast. Yeah, it would right. be interesting yeah. to see on that one. They did that in the management. They let other people harvested them. They they let them hunt with dogs in there, and then they trapped them. And guess what? I drove through there uh, Sunday evening, and I saw a hog sign in there again. They yeah. really knocked them back real good in yeah. there, uh, but they're back they're again back. Uh, yeah. because they propagate, as you say, yeah. so well. Yep. Okay, we'll take a final break and come back with Billy. Okay, well, welcome back. Here with our cousin, Billy Grantham, coming down here. Always appreciate having him. We get a lot of good comments on Billy, and we, we're glad to have him being part of Panhandle Outdoors team. Let's take a, take a look at our fishing game time today. Blue Water Outriggers brings to us every morning. Looking at this morning, 7.06 to 9.06. This evening from 7.30 to 9.30. Okay, we've got some more stuff going on. All kind of cool things going up your way. So what else? Well, just to reminisce, you, know, you talk about um, that pulled pork. I, I love to take that pulled pork after we eat it, and if there's some of it left over, I like to make a big old pot of stew out of it. Mm. It's got that smoky flavor mm. that's in it when I smoke it, mm. and then uh, put all your vegetables in it, let it cook, and simmer. Pour that butter and snuff, not half as dusty. We, we, we talk about you know the whole pro you do the whole process. You harvest it, then you skin it, clean it, and debone de it. Yeah. And, how long does that usually take you to do all of that? Uh, you know, just a small pig, you know, 45 minutes to an hour if you yeah. do it all, get all of it, and just wash it up and I put it in the refrigerator in the barn for a day or two, then I took it out. But the key to it is having the wood ready and, and just get the box hot, put mm -hmm. it on there, let it smoke, sit around, drink a cup of coffee for a little while, yeah. and, uh, That's and, cool. uh, and then you ready? Generation after generation have done that in, in the woods in this area, and we talk about that. And, they, and uh, talking about doing things and all, your, your church ladies, tell about that. Yeah, at my mom's church, I went down to visit her yesterday, and uh, you see this picture here. I thought I'd set it back up. Oh, let's yeah, see. My, oh, give me a moment. But, uh, as you're doing that, it's a little fundraiser. And, and we always call them the church ladies. Every church uh, throughout yeah. the rural area, they have some working folks, some working ladies, or the church ladies do remarkable things. I always love to hear their stories. So Billy was able to do that yesterday. So here we go. We got Down there visiting Mama. She's sitting there in the chair, my two sisters there, and everybody's working, uh, as they used to do years ago. But they're making these, um, we'll show them off in a minute, these peanut butter, they're not for sale. They have sold out. They're not making any more. It's over with. But then while they're doing that, somebody's in the back room back there frying fish in uh -huh. another shed out back at the church right there. But, uh, but they make these things up to raise money. They've been doing it for 39 years, making these uh, uh, right there. Oh, man. It's they awful. used to put names on them, but it got where the demand was so high that they couldn't keep up the pace of that. So this is a fundraiser for the church ladies. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Peanut butter, just like a Reese cup. So it's peanut butter with chocolate on it. That's and right. they, they do it from scratch? They do it from scratch. Nothing else but that. That's why they sell out. That's, that's why. Yeah. And then you have one here? And we brought one back. Uh, one for Jeff and one for Winston. Jeff's already ate his, I think. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, decorate it, but well, uh, well, thank you. Uh, delicious, Miss Gill. Maybe she'll okay. enjoy some of it herself. And, uh, we can't order any more for Easter. No, no more. They told me strictly. Uh, yeah, once you get on here, I, I said, Lord. They said we couldn't handle it because the demand's so high out yeah. there in Blountstown and Sneeds, and I delivered probably 175 yesterday. No way. Up to Chattahoochee, I did, man, a bunch of. Them. Is that not cool or what? I mean. Yeah. I mean that they're actually doing it from scratch, and they're doing a fundraiser for the for the church. And yep. uh, then in, in the back room, in the back shed back there, some of the guys are frying fish. Frying fish, baking baked beans, frying cornbread, uh, and I had a feast. And they had some 
Niner pudding. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Make a puppy puller freight train. And yeah. uh, it, that's our way of life up here. Yeah, you know, boy. Things like that. We always want to keep it going, and, and uh, that, that's cool stuff right there. It was. It was. I got to see Mama and give some sugar, and yeah. she was thrilled to see me, and uh, no, I didn't that, bring back no COVID that I know of. They, they didn't uh, put you to work, though, did they? No, I can't. You, de you deliver. Uh, uh, arriving on time has uh, an essence to it at all. <laughs> Getting there just right time, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, we got about a minute left. Uh, what, what else is going Fishing on? Fishing season. Okay. They've been wearing them out on Lake Seminole. Shellcracker and brim and the bass. Fishing's been fantastic up there. Um, and then on the river as well. Just, mm -hmm. just wonderful that... Uh, and the river's been up and down like yeah. it's supposed to, but that's fantastic. Yeah. Them folks down at Howard's Creek and on the other side of the river, as I say, uh, White Oak Landing and Owl Creek and mm -hmm. Wrights and all that, they're, yeah. they're tickled to see that. I know, and right now this weekend's going to be high, you see, but next weekend's going to be dropping out. And uh, we always ask you, where the fish incoming or outgoing? Or, you know, I just tell them, I just want to go. <laughs> yeah, you remember what uh, Captain Roy used to always say, and they ask him, Roy, when's a good time to go fishing? When she'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah. still rings true. That still yeah. rings true. We all, yes, sir. We sometimes get too busy. Yeah. But better go wrap it up, buddy. I always appreciate you coming down yeah, here. Yeah, man. And we uh, appreciate the egg, and, I, and, uh, and tell those ladies thank you for doing what they're you doing. Got that, that right. That's boy. good stuff and all. Yes, sir. So uh, we got this next week or two, you're going to be busy? Well, I, I didn't get to mow my grass for two or three days, you know, because I was gone, but I'm getting caught back up. I had to put a new battery in my boat. Y'all hear me talk about preparation. That's it. That thing would not hold a charge, and I had to put a new battery in there. All right, buddy. Thank you now. All right. Appreciate y'all watching Panhand Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership each and every day. Appreciate part of our team coming down. And y'all do something good, like these ladies are. Do something good for someone else. There today. you go. Have a great day, and God bless. Bye bye. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.